Welcome to App Design Tips. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take a look at Adobe Fresco. Now Adobe Fresco is a digital painting app and a lot of digital painters like to use Photoshop for their workflow and that's great if you already know Photoshop but Photoshop has a steep learning curve and the features inside Photoshop are for photographers, for composition, and multiple things like that. So Adobe Fresco takes the best features for digital painting in Photoshop and adds more features, but it's a lot simpler to learn how to use because it's catered just for digital painters and drawers. So let's take a look at this app by creating our first painting. Adobe Fresco has three different types of brushes and it has a pixel-based brush, a wet-based brush, and then a vector brush. I'm gonna show you how all of these brushes work together. So first, let's start with the basic pixel brush. This is something that you find in Adobe Photoshop or other traditional digital painting tools. And we can just tap on dry media. Let's just pick something simple here. I'm just gonna increase my brush size. And you can see that it paints uh, pretty good. It's just like what you'd be used to in other apps. But I'm gonna tap with two fingers and just undo that. And let's start by painting a sunset. I'm gonna use that with an oil-based brush so I can tap and hold here on these live brushes. And I can choose between watercolor and oil and I'll show you both of them, but let's start with some oil right here. And I'm just gonna go into the oil paint glaze just to get a nice oily paintbrush in here. And I'm just gonna start painting and you can see that we're just painting some oil on the canvas. And maybe we'll do something like that. And Traditionally, in most other apps, if you want to blend these colors, you might go over here and make it a little bit more orange, and then make it a little bit more yellow, and just kind of use small increments. But because we can mix very good here, I'm just going to use this yellow color. I'm just going to throw this yellow color within here. And once we bleed into this red color, you can see that it's starting to mix and it looks really good. So it acts like this oil is still wet, this oil brush. So if I wanna go back to the red to bleed that into the yellow, I can tap on this eyedropper here, move and pick one of my red colors, and let's just bleed that into the orange here, something like this. And we'll just go until we can find a good graduation between the two colors, something like that. So that's a good start, and then we'll try some purple. We'll just throw some purple over here into the end. We'll do that and just mix it in. And as far as the mixture, we have some settings here. So if I tap on this mixture setting, it's saying uh, mix the paint a little bit. If I wanna mix the paint a lot more, I'm gonna turn that up and let's just do a, a much better job at just mixing and blending these together. And as we go, we can see that that's a lot more smooth. And so just very quickly, let's just go ahead and fill the rest of this. We have like a nice sunset color I'm just gonna undo that. And that's the power of this digital painting. You can undo if you make any mistakes. And that's what we have to start out with. Now that's oil-based painting. I wanna show you a water color or water-based painting. We're gonna add a new layer here. So I'm gonna tap on new layer. And let's go back into our wet brushes, our live brushes. And we can tap back and I'm going to use watercolor. And let's just use the basic uh, watercolor round detail and I'm gonna create a mountain silhouette. So I'm just gonna make this black right here. And I want 100% opacity. Inside of our brush settings, we have the flow of color. So we want that color flow to be really rich and deep, 100%. And then with watercolor, we want water flow, how much water is on our brush. If we choose to have zero water, you can see it uses just that pigment, but there's no water that kind of bleeds around. So I'm gonna tap with two fingers to undo that. I'm gonna increase the size of my brush here. And let's go back in. Let's add a little bit of water flow here. And I'm just gonna create some mountains. And you can see it has sensitivity. So if I draw lightly, it's really narrow. If I go deeper, we get a thick brush. So it behaves as if it's a real brush. So I'm just gonna create this mountain here. And just do something like that. Make it a little bit rigidy. Ah, that's too rigidy. And again, I'm just having fun. We can play around with it because there's no mistake, there's always undo. And I'm just gonna create that silhouette. So the great thing about watercolor here is now I want this mountain, the silhouette to kind of just bleed down and blend down into these colors. So I can come into my color setting here. I can turn down the opacity. So now I only have water on my brush. And because I only have water on my brush, I can start brushing and you can see that it bleeds down 
this pigment, the water's picking it up and it's kind of just bleeding down onto the page. So very quickly, I can go in here and just pick up some of that background gradient color here just to make it look a little bit better. And again, let's just do this until the water kind of bleeds down off the page. So we got something like that. And if I want to just pick up a little bit more and blend that, you can just keep on going and that pigment just falls right into that water that you're adding. The gravity does its job just as if it's a real watercolor painting. So now we have our mountains. Now we forgot to add a sun and we're gonna do that by just creating a new layer. So let's tap on new layer here and we can drag that layer in between the mountain and the background. So now we have the background, we're gonna create a sun and then the mountain's going to be in the foreground. Now I can go into my oil painting right here and let's go back to our oil paint glaze and I can create a yellow sun very easily and let's create the flow 100%, the paint mixture 75% and I want to turn up the opacity here and then I can just go ahead and create a sun just like that and there's a sun in there. Now I want this sun to be a little bit more accurate so I'm going to tap with two fingers to undo and we have some marquee selection tools that lets us paint within a selection. So I can tap on this circle here and let's go ahead and just draw a circle, something like that. And I can go ahead and let go once I like that. And using the paint bucket tool, I can fill in this circle with just this yellow color here and go ahead and tap deselect. So we have that shape of our sun now. And I wanna paint and add some volume into this sun, make it look like a sphere instead of a circle. But what happens if I go in here, let's say I add some orange in here and I start Oops, let me undo that. I need to paint with my oil paint. I can blend this in. So I can do that, but it'll start bleeding off and I won't get that perfect circle anymore. So if I tap, undo with two fingers, I can go into this layer setting, just tap on there, and there's a setting in here called a lock transparency. And what that means is anywhere that I brush, it's only going to apply that paint within anywhere that I've already painted. So I'm gonna lock that transparency. And now watch, when I do this, it never leaves that circle. So I'm gonna zoom in here and let's just go ahead and create some depth in here. I'm gonna just create a little bit of orange right here. Let's blend that in here. And I'm going to tap in my settings here and reload my color. So it's kind of the orange is disappearing because it's not reloading that orange color on my brush when I mix. Now that I have reload color, we're gonna to start to see more orange as I'm painting in. So I'm just gonna actually add some orange in there. So I'm just dipping some orange in there and then I wanna mix it together. Just go ahead and mix it. And something like that looks good. And if I wanna add like a white highlight, I can pick up a color. So I wanna pick up this yellow color to use, but I can make that brighter now. I wanna make that brighter just around the edges here and make it glow a little bit. So now very easily we've got a sun. But the fun doesn't stop there. We're gonna create some clouds. So we can add a new layer, go into our wet brushes again. I'm gonna go into watercolor. I'm gonna create some clouds with this watercolor wash soft. So I'm gonna go over here. Clouds are typically white. So I'm gonna start with white. And we're gonna go over here and let's let the flow of the pigment be, let's say uh, 80%. In the water, we can keep it 100%. Um, I think that's probably a good start. And we can lower our brush down, something like this. And I'm just gonna go ahead and play around with the cloud. Just do something like that. Um, come over here maybe. Uh, let's add a cloud behind the sun as well. So you can see it's in front of the sun. I can just tap on this layer and say, you go behind. And now that cloud's hidden behind the sun. Looks really good. And the nice thing about this is I'm adding some white colors that's bleeding in and I can go back into my brush. I'm gonna remove the pigment, but I still have 100% water in here. I'm gonna let this white just bleed in, something like that. And now we've got some nice clouds. So now my clouds might be a little bit too white, a little bit too opaque. I wanna see through in that blended background that we created. So we can tap over here into our layers properties. I'm just gonna turn the opacity down and you can see very easily we can just create just a hint of those clouds, something like that. 
and we can do some powerful things that we just can't do in real life. So that looks really good. And I think finally we wanna add some birds. So I'm just gonna add a new layer. I'm gonna bring this up here and just very quickly, we can uh, use just a basic pixel brush for birds and I'll just use, in fact, I think I found one, something like right here, that looks good. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my brush size down, something like that, and we can come in here and just paint a bird. And if the brush size is too big, we can bring it down, just play around with it and come over here, just create another bird right here, another bird right here. Okay, so we've got a few birds, let's make a flying V here. So something like that. And again, because it's on its own layer, I can tap on this move tool, I can resize this brush. If I want the birds to be a little bit bigger, a little bit more narrow, I can move it around wherever I want, and we'll tap done. And the last thing I wanna do is create kind of a reflection of this sun down here. So I actually wanna start with this mountain silhouette. We're gonna add a watercolor, but again, I'm gonna tap on this layer. We're gonna lock the transparency so the colors don't bleed outside of this. And we'll go in and pick this yellow color. We'll start off with this yellow color here. And we'll go back into our water brush watercolor, and we'll just add a little bit here, something like that. You can see how good that's looking. I'm gonna go back into my eyedropper. We're gonna pick a color, maybe somewhere around here, this orange color, and come over here, just bleed in some of that orange, and then we're going to go back and let's do some of this purple color right here. So, got that. Again, I'm going to remove the pigment here and just blend everything through a little bit better, something like that. And we've got just a nice simple painting. So just in a few short minutes, you can see how powerful this is with our wet brushes, our pixel brushes. And now let's use a vector brush. Vector brushes are really nice because they're super sharp. They don't lose any pixel value. And I'm gonna go ahead and sign this painting since it's so beautiful. I'm gonna go in here and use just a white color. I'm gonna just Set the size down and we can zoom in as far as we want in this corner. And we can just go ahead and I'll undo that until my signature is perfect. Okay, so you can see in the vector brushes, I can zoom in here and you can see it's always super sharp. It doesn't lose any quality. And the nice thing about that too is if I ever wanna resize this within the frame, I can go into my move tool. I can move this to be a little bit larger if I want. Move that around. And now we can simply export our painting right here. We can do a quick export into a PNG or a JPEG image and share it on social media. We can also save this in the Creative Cloud and open it in Photoshop to continue some composition settings, some adjustment layers, and make some more powerful adjustments from there. So this is Adobe Fresco. It's very awesome. If you haven't tried it yet, I'd suggest going online and Googling some simple painting images, just copying them. Maybe follow Bob Ross online with his physical paintbrushes and try to mimic him digitally on here. It might be super fun. If you're going to give Adobe Fresco a try, please share your paintings with me and I'd be glad to give you some feedback. If you have any other questions about Adobe Fresco, be sure to leave some comments below.